So we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, thank you everyone for joining. I know um, uh, you guys all love to hear about nutrition. Um, and this time we're going to talk about nutrition and immunity. We're going to separate those facts from fiction. I know there's a lot of information out there um, regarding, uh, you know, immunity, especially with pandemic as we're coming up to, um, you know, our one year anniversary since the start of the pandemic. So I, I did want to, you know, revisit this topic uh, with immunity. Coach Darren, just want to make sure that you are recording. Yep. Um, perfect. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that I uh, want to talk about is what is the immune system? I know we hear lots of talk about what the immune system is, um, but just a sort of a quick overview. Um, it is the first line of defense against any substances like antigens, um, which are found on the surface of a pathogen. Uh, those pathogens are viruses and bacteria um, that you all know pretty well. Um, and so what the immune system does, it recognizes that it's a foreign, um, a foreign agent in the body, and then it tries to destroy it um, um, or get rid of it. There's two types of immunity that we have. We have an innate immunity, which is what we're born with. So that's our stomach acid, that's our cough reflex, that's our skin. Um, and then we have something called an acquired immunity. And that's um, what we develop over time. That's, you know, as we're in elementary school and we get sick and we pass along those cold viruses and we get the flu, um, that helps us develop um, other, uh, you know, antigens and antibodies um, to help fight these foreign substances that get into the body. So moving forward, this is what we're really going to focus on is how you um, can control your immune system, because it really does come down to you and what you are doing. So there's a few things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the microbiome, how stress affects the immune system, how sleep affects it, how exercise affects the immune system. And we'll talk about some macronutrients and micronutrients, and those are going to be your proteins. Those are going to be vitamins and minerals. So what is the microbiome? I know a lot of you have heard this before. Um, uh, talk about microbiome. Um, so the, what the microbiome is, is actually good and bacteria, good and bad bacteria that um, live in the digestive tract. They play a major role in the immune system function. Um, so what it does is uh, this bacteria lives in this uh, mucosal barrier. It's this layer of mucus um, that lines the digestive tract. It's the first line of def defense for that immune system. Um, so it does impact the strength and ability of the immune system to act on viruses and, and bacteria. So for eating foods uh, with sugar, with um, fats like saturated fats and trans fats and preservatives like highly processed food that have, um, there's a lot of chemicals in it. It really affects this mucus lining of the intestines. And what that does is it causes inflammation. We're going to talk a lot about inflammation today. Um, and inflammation makes it more difficult for the immune system to deal, deal with outside bacteria and viruses. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk about the causes of inflammation um, and we'll focus on, you know, why that's important for immunity. So the biggest, most important one that I want to talk about is stress. Um, and we're also going to talk about how nutrition is related to stress and how nutrition can help with stress. So stress at its um, very top level is that fight or flight sensation that we have in our body. Um, there's a couple different responses. There's physiological responses, which include like that increased heart rate, um, increased blood pressure. And this fight or flight um, sensation is just, you know, readying you for um, an emergency situation. So if anyone has anxiety um, or you start to feel scared or anything like that, you're going to, you know, have these uh, uh, physiological responses, which also include like sweating. And that's when you get the clammy hands. But what we're going to talk about is the hormonal response to flight, because this is what is really important to nutrition um, and some other like detrimental effects that it has on the body. So we have one primary stress horm hormone called cortisol. And I know a lot of you have heard me talk about cortisol before. Anyone who's, um, you know, worked with me, um, if I've trained with you, you've always heard me talk about this. So cortisol is actually an anti-inflammatory hormone. So it's meant to spike in the morning to help you wake up, to get your body moving. And then it's supposed to taper off during the day so that when you start to sleep, that level is really, really low and it allows you to sleep through the night. It is intended to keep inflammation down. It also helps regulate blood sugar, um, and it also controls your circadian rhythm, which is your sleep cycle. 
But if there is a dysfunction within the um, cortisol release, it causes inflammation. And that dysfunction is usually caused by stress. Um, so as that stress increases, and if it stays up over time, um, inflammation increases. And what happens is that um, your body starts to hold on to fat. And it's usually um, deposited around the abdomen, which is where a lot of us struggle with that extra fat. And this is triggered um, by increased cortisol levels during the day. So a lot of times this has to do with the work. This has to do with you know, um, at home, like taking care of kids, especially like during, you know, the shelter in place where we're all doing Zoom sessions from home. So this is uh, really something to be aware of um, as you're working throughout the day. And then as you're eating up throughout the day, how can we manage the cortisol levels? So Chronic stress is um, a result of uh, stress that's built up over time. Um, and what happens is, is that you have these non-essential body functions shut down, one of them being your immune response and the other one being digestion. These are two like really important um, factors when it comes to immunity. Um, the chronic stress can also lead to long-term effects, which alter those cortisol levels. So what happens is that the cortisol production that is an intended um, as an anti-inflammatory response to help keep stress down, um, it will bottom out. And so what it does, you have this huge shift in hormones. Um, and with this shift in hormones, what happens is with this chronic stress, the shift in hormones, our body actually becomes insulin resistance. And this is really important when it comes to food, when it comes to trying to lose weight, um, and when it comes to immunity. Um, and this can all lead to type 2 diabetes, which we know, um, and I'm sure all of us I need, at least know one person who has diabetes, how important nutrition um, comes into play with this. Uh, chronic stress also leads to cardiovascular diseases, so like heart attacks, um, a stroke, um, anything along that line. So it's really, really important um, that we manage those chronic stress levels, and we do this through food. So if we are constantly stressed out, if we're chronically stressed out, for over a long time. And this could be a few days to weeks to months and even years, um, depending on, you know, what's going on in our life. What happens is with these um, hormone shifts, it leads to an increased hunger. It leads to increased sugar cravings. It leads to increased body fat. And what happens is it's really hard to control that weight. It's going to be really hard to lose that weight. So no matter if you're exercising, um, you know, the recommended amount, if you're eating properly, if you have that high stress level, it's still going to be really, really difficult for you to lose weight. So the next important thing that comes with this is sleep. Again, this is something that if you've worked with me with nutrition coaching before, or even if I've seen you in the gym and we've talked about sleep before, sleep is really, really important. Um, it allows your body to recover um, and to repair itself um, without any other um, you know, energy needs working. So the immune system works in sync with that circadian rhythm, which is your sleep cycle. So you have certain immune responses that occur during the day, and that's when you have have most of, um, you know, your um, body working against these, against these pathogens and bacteria that enter the body. And then during sleep is when um, certain hormones are released that support cell activation and then production of pro those protective proteins. So that's why it's really, really important to get um, sleep. And we're shooting for, you know, minimum seven hours. So it's really recommended that adults get seven to eight hours. Of course, it varies um, depending on the individual. But what happens is if we're not getting enough sleep, this leads to a decrease in those infection fighting antibodies and cells, which causes inflammation. And again, it takes us back to that cortisol. Um, and then this also affects how fast you recover from a sickness. So we do want to keep that in mind. Um, really important to make sure we're getting sleep to make sure that we are monitoring that stress. Again, something super important um, is exercise. Um, exercise actually helps get rid of that bacteria uh, from the lungs and airways. And this is actually a physical response. So as you're breathing out, um, if you have bacteria or pathogens coming in from through those airways, through the nose, um, exhaling at a forceful amount will actually, you know, try to help get most of that out. But right now, it's really important for us to be wearing masks. So if you are working out at the gym, you know, having that mask there will keep those pathogens in a small little area and spread it instead of spreading across the room. 
Um, exercise also changes the antibodies and the white blood cells. So it helps them circulate more rapidly, which helps get to pathogens and antigens a lot faster. And then the rise in body temperature when you're exing out, um, exercising, you know, you're sweating, you start to get really warm. Um, so during and after exercise, um, that rise in body temperature can also help with uh, back to help prevent bacteria from growing. And this is also a response that we see when we get a fever during the flu, um, that rise in body temperature is intended to help, um, you know, kill that bacteria. Um, and then exercise also slows down the release of that stress hormone cortisol, which is what we talk about. And you're going to hear me keep talking about cortisol because it is really one of those big factors, hormonal factors that affect body weight um, and trying to lose weight. Um, so we have this fun picture of gummy worms. I love gummy worms, um, but this is uh, falls under that processed food list um, along with simple carbohydrates and table sugar. Um, these processed foods, like I said, when um, I was talking about the microbiome, really affect that gut lining of, di of the digestive tract. So when we have sugars that are, or food that are high in sugars, food that is high in fat, food that is high in sodium, they all have these like low nutritional values. They're low in vitamins, they're low in minerals. They don't really contribute to that immune system and keeping that body healthy. What happens is it also leads to that excess weight gain, especially for stress. Stress. We're gonna retain that weight around that midsection. Um, and again, all of these processed foods um, and that inflammation in the digestive tract, it's gonna lead to that, con that chronic inflammation, which is those increased cortisol levels which again is going to lead us to type 2 diabetes. It's going to lead us to obesity. Anyone who has high blood pressure, you know this, and anyone who has any cardiovascular um, symptoms, um, anyone who's had a heart attack or anyone who's had a stroke, this is like really important to monitor that intake of those processed foods. And so you're like, Coach Sarah, we hear all of this talk in the news about vitamins, right? We've heard about vitamin C, we've heard about vitamin D, we've heard about zinc. So this is where I wanna talk about those micronutrients. So we have a couple different areas of micronutrients. We have water-soluble vitamins, we have fat-soluble vitamins, and then we have minerals. So uh, we have all heard, and we probably grew up, that when we have a cold or when we have the flu, we need to take vitamin C. Um, there are those packets around that, you know, those emergency packets that you, you know, they're powder packets. You can get them anywhere. You throw them in the hot water, drink it up, uh, and you get your vitamin C. Um, so what happens with these water-soluble vitamins is that it doesn't stay in your system. So if you um, take it uh, through the tea and you know, you're like, I, I'm just gonna pump it up, make sure I have like family that's sick. Um, your body's actually just gonna get rid of what it doesn't need. Um, so there's not really any point in taking more than what the recommended dosage is. So taking that extra vitamin C packet is just gonna go right through your body and actually not stay in your body. Uh, we have fat soluble vitamins. This is vitamin D. You've heard this a lot, especially when it um, comes to, you know, uh, COVID-19. Uh, this is one topic that I've seen a lot in the news. Um, vitamin D is really important. It does play a really big role in immunity. It also helps with absorption of certain minerals. Um, it decreases that inflammation. Um, but this is something that we can get from the sun. We can also get it from our foods um, really, really easily. Um, People are worried about having um, being deficient in it, um, but you know, for the most part, people get enough um, to in their foods or being outside, especially the summertime, um, that we don't necessarily need to have those additional supplements because it's a fat soluble vitamin. It's actually stored in your body. So for someone to be deficient um, or insufficient, really, really takes a lot of not eating the right foods um, to get to that level. Um, and so that's what that fat soluble means is that it's actually stored in our body. Um, and so that, you know, if we build it up over time, we have plenty of it. Um, and then we have minerals. Um, zinc is another one that you've heard, like if you have a cold or if you have a flu, make sure you take some zinc tablets. Um, zinc does reduce inflammation. Um, but this is also something that if you're eating a well-balanced meal, you're getting enough of it in your diet. Um, and really the only populations um, that 
are really affected and that really need to take these vitamins and these extra supplements are the older population um, because as you age, your immune system function um, doesn't work as well. The immune response doesn't work as well, which is what we see now with the pandemic where, you know, everyone in the nursing homes, um, you know, it's really, you know, hard for them right now. Um, so they are individuals who do need extra supplementation for the vitamins. Um, and then uh, as well as populations who, um, you know, might not be eating at all on some days. So it's really those um, vitamins and supplements are meant for those who are really at that deficient level where they're not getting food um, daily. Um, and those are usually those individuals who live under the poverty line where it's a struggle to get food. But as a general population, you should be able to get enough vitamins and minerals through the foods that you're eating, unless you're eating those highly processed foods that don't have those nutrients in it for you. So this takes us to how can I help my immune system? So we have this problem where we um, are consuming foods that are high in sugar, consuming foods that are high in fat, and consuming foods that are high in sodium. And a lot of times we don't realize how much fat is in it, how much sodium is in it, and how much sugar is in the foods that we're eating. And just by looking at the you know, nutrition label, um, you know, it'll say, oh, it's 2% fat, but what is that 2% fat and how much of that is the actual serving? And so um, doing a little bit of math, we can break that down. But most people overconsume sugar, most people overconsume fat, most people overconsume sodium, even if there is that idea that they are eating healthy or that, you know, their meals are pretty good. Um, again, this problem causes that excess weight and that chronic inflammation, which is that cortisol again, which leads to those sugar cravings and late night snacking. I know that this is a big problem. Um, I see this all the time, um, especially, you know, that we're in the shelter in place. Um, we see those sugar cravings because we're eating out of boredom. Um, we're just sitting at the computer all day for work. Um, or if you do really well during the day and all of a sudden at night after dinner, you're eating enough calories through that snacking to, you know, it's like almost having a, another full meal. And so we're overindulging um, in the evening due to this chronic inflammation and due to these like high sugar foods, high fat foods and high sodium foods. Um, even though, you know, the nutrition labels might say something different, they still include all of these items. And again, the result of this is that increase in blood pressure, the increase in that risk for type two diabetes, and then in that, that increase in risk for cardiovascular disease. So how can we fix this? One is by implementing those healthy food habits. Um, and that's something I work on with uh, the nutrition coaching is through that cognitive restructuring, uh, where I work with individuals on rewiring the brain. Um, so what happens is we have these ways of eating that we've built up over time, um, you know, 30, 40 years of eating habits. Um, it's not something that can, you know, be changed overnight. I always use that, um, the example of brushing your teeth. And those of you who have kids, you know this, like how many times did you have to tell your kids to brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth tonight? Did you brush your teeth? Brush your teeth. Make sure you brush your teeth. Um, and eventually they'll get to that point where um, you don't have to tell them to brush their teeth and you notice they're brushing their teeth all the time. And so that's what that cognitive restructuring is. Um, and that's where I come in as that nutrition coach and as that ac accountability. Um, I will say, hey, did you get this in? Did you get this in? Did you get this in? Until it is, um, you know, we make those neural, new neural pathway changes that really stick in your brain and it becomes a habit. So you can go out and, you know, enjoy those foods without feeling guilty. Um, and you can celebrate and you can en en enjoy all of this food without having stress or anxiety for that. So coach Darren, Awesome. I'm uh, open this up to you. Yes. Uh, we have a question uh, for you, Coach Sarah. Uh, so yes. in addition to the vitamins and minerals that you mentioned a couple slides back, I believe it was vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc. Um, a lot of the immunity, immunity supplements also contain elderberry. Uh, so I'm wondering about uh, the effects of, of elderberry and how uh, it, it helps uh, the immune system. Can you tell me a bit about that? So, yeah, so there's actually a lot of supplements, um, you know, it could be ginseng, it could be um, all of these other herbal supplements that also have shown, you know, positive effects of, um, you know, helping that immune system. But similar to the vitamins, um, if you get these vitamins 
and nutrients through your food. So even vitamin C, um, vitamin D, these are essential nutrients that are needed for your body to function. Um, elderberry, elderberry is, a, is an herbal supplement that doesn't necessarily, it's not essential. So it's not needed for your body to maintain that. It might enhance some functions of it, but it's not needed for that. Um, and you're going to see this with a lot of, um, you know, again, a lot of supplements, you're going to see these, you know, claims that they help with immunity. Um, but again, it's, if it's not essential, it's not necessarily needed. Um, and again, you can get this, all of these like essential vitamins and nutrients through the foods that we eat, as long as we're incorporating those healthy foods and reducing, you know, those high, high fat, high sugar, high sodium foods. Got it. Yeah. I think elderberry is kind of like Blueberries, antioxidants, those things are always good for you. But if you yep. just have a normal meal or normal uh, eating, and then uh, some of the cases not always necessary. So uh, next question for you, Coach. Um, full fat versus non or low fat dairy. Uh, is oh, there any this sort is of, my favorite. Yeah. The difference is there <laughs> how they, you know, uh, there's more sugar and preservatives in the lower fat stuff versus the full fat stuff. So could you touch on that just a little bit? And yes. And so when we're... Yeah. So when we're, I love talking about full fat and non-fat. So there's a couple different reasons why someone would need full fat and why someone would need non-fat. Um, and with the content of it, so just because it's uh, full fat or non-fat doesn't necessarily mean that the sugar content changes because the um, uh, yogurt or something like that, and we'll use that as an example, um, comes from dairy. There's always going to be some sort of sugar break, uh, breakdown in there, and it's going to come in the form of lactose. Uh, which is the uh, sugar structure um, of dairy. So it is going to have sugar in it. Um, the fat that is a separate component um, away from sugar. So if someone is need, if someone is needing more of a non-fat, um, and you know this is actually going to lead to the seminar next month that I'm going to give on um, menopause. Um, and uh, there are certain times in your in a female's life cycle where you actually don't need that fat anymore. Um, fat is used um, for hormones, like um, producing hormones. It's helping, you know, with uh, storage of vitamins and nutrients. But at a certain age or a certain time in your life, you actually don't need that because you're not producing the hormones that um, is needed for fat. And so that would be really the only time that you would need to start reducing that fat intake. But just keep in mind that sugar and fat are two separate um, components. So you can have non-fat yogurt, you can have um, low-fat or full-fat yogurt, and they, they'll still have the same sugar component in it unless it says um, no sugar on it. And that's usually supplemented with some other um, um, uh, like sugar substitute. Gotcha. Uh, I have a quick question about uh, ways of getting vitamins and minerals and things like that. Cause I know you mentioned that some of our water soluble, some of them are fat soluble, but if you overeat them, then they're not really going to be too effective. Is there any findings or anything that's pertinent to the way that you consume these vitamins? So for example, uh, I really like gummy vitamins cause I hate swallowing pills. Um, <laughs> but the problem is that I, I just sit there and kind of pop them like jelly beans or something. Uh, but is there any sort of, uh, you know, benefit to having just like a pill that you swallow versus like chewables or anything on, on, on that? So first and foremost, we want to make sure that we're getting our vitamins through our food as opposed to taking it through a pill, uh, whether it's a pill or a gummy. And um, that's going to be the most important. And like I said, most people who eat vegetables, who are eating fruit, who are eating protein are getting those um, nutrients. And so, um, uh, unless you're, you know, you're prescribed by a doctor, which is usually going to be like an iron supplement where, you know, more women are susceptible to being deficient. Most people aren't deficient in vitamins. Um, vitamin D might be one um, in the wintertime because we're not outside. We don't have our shorts and t-shirts on. So we're not getting that vitamin D through the sun. Um, but um, for the most part, we don't need to take supplements um, unless prescribed by the doctor. The easiest way, again, is to get it through fruits, vegetables, um, and those uh, protein protein sources. Um, and if you do need to take a supplement, um, it really doesn't matter if it comes in um, a pill form or a gummy form. But just note that, you know, you can overdose um, and on not overdose, but you can have toxic side effects if you take too many vitamins. And if your body doesn't need it, um, like those fat soluble vitamins don't get excreted 
through the body. So you can actually get too much of it. You can get too much vitamin A, which is the fat soluble vitamin. You can have too much vitamin E and those causes, uh, those cause like other side effects. So just be mindful of the vitamins that you're taking. If you're taking them, know why you're taking them. Are you taking them because the doctor prescribed them or are you taking them because you think you need them? Um, so really evaluating what you're eating, um, which is where I can come in um, as that nutrition coach, taking a look at the food and say, yeah, you are getting enough vitamins. You really don't need to take this and save your money and go buy some new shoes, new workout shoes or new workout clothes. Awesome. Really good to know because I take them because they taste good, which is probably not yeah. the best reason. So, uh, um, if anyone else has any other questions, feel free to hop on last minute questions. I had a question about inflammation. That's a big one these days. And I know you've rounded it up, but uh, are the green teas and all, if you have thyroid, a good thing to do, uh, you know, because some of the things are like, you know, anti-inflammatory, but then it depends on what you're going through at that point, whether you have thyroid, et cetera. So yeah, again, a green tea sort of falls under that supplement. Um, it is a supplement, right? We can still get a lot of those nutrients through um, through our foods and green tea is a great way to get, um, some minerals and stuff that we need for that. But keep in mind that if you drink green tea to help reduce inflammation, it's not a cure-all, right? It, it's a whole, you need that holistic, well-balanced diet. Green tea is just not going to be that band-aid that fixes that inflammation. So you really do have to work on those other things. You can include green tea in it, but it's not if you have any other issues. Um, and there are like autoimmune disorders out there. Um, and that is, um, you know, that's something else that has to do with inflammation. Um, but we can always have a, a conversation, but just know like, you know, green tea is a small little teeny tiny part that helps that inflammation, but it's not going to be that cure-all that, you know, fixes everything. Got it. Thanks. Of course. Anything else before we hop off? Oh, Stephanie, maybe I'll do a separate one on, uh, I might do a separate seminar on, on that. Uh, she's asking on the topic of inflammation, what to avoid. Um, there's a lot of information out there. And Stephanie, you and I could probably have a long conversation on that. I could talk about that for a couple hours. Uh, so I might do another seminar on just the inflammation itself and, and maybe like an anti-inflammatory diet. Because I know that's a big popular thing is the diet. But if we uh, really, you know, take a look at what we're eating, you know, we can sort of weed everything out from there. Thanks so much, coach. Uh, if, if we have any more questions or are looking for uh, nutrition coaching, uh, how do we get that from you? How do we reach you? So you can always reach me at Sarah at fittrackcoaching.com. I will also follow up, send everyone um, a link to the nutrition coaching page and we will Thank see you later. Cool. Bye everyone. Thank you, coach. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Have a great rest of the week.